We've just heard the, the U.S. and China, this part of this 100-day trade deal, China has said it will start to import more U.S. goods. What are we seeing? What is your view on the relationship now, the trading relationship between these two largest economies, given how bleak it could have been? We could have had that currency minute later label. We could have had trade tariffs. None of that has come to fore. Is it a more positive relationship? I, I think people are encouraged with the results of the Mar-a-Lago summit and the fact that the two governments really have worked hard to put together a 100-day plan. Uh, the initial uh, results are uh, on matters that the two governments have been talking about for a long time, actually, and it wasn't easy to arrive at this. At the same time, I think it's important to recognize that no matter who is going to be uh, elected president, uh, there is very likely going to be a significant call in the United States for recalibration of the economic relationship with China. And I think there are a couple of reasons for this. First is I think that both parties realized during the election campaign period that trade uh, had had a positive impact on some parts of the U.S. economy, but that there were many people who were being dislocated. And I think both parties were looking at ways that they could make adjustments to address people who were being displaced by the imports coming into the United States. And I think on the other side of the equation, uh, I think the business community has been very concerned and, and, in fact, rather pessimistic about changes that have been taking place in China, that China's focus on industrial policies have closed the space that was available for foreign companies to compete here. So I think no matter who was president in the United States, there was going to be an effort to make some changes. I think with respect to the initial results of the 100-day plan, uh, they're encouraging, but they don't really get to the deeper systemic issues that are of special concern to the United States. Now, I think Larry Summers described it as is a ludicrously hyped deal, pouring skepticism on that on that trade deal, because of course a lot of people pointing out that a lot of these actions were and agreements were already kind of set in place. Uh, you mentioned the concerns amongst corporates here, and we've had the European Chambers of Commerce putting out their confidence survey today. European companies saying they don't expect a more level playing field in the next five years. They feel that it is a largely unfair market here in China. They're pretty bleak about their prospects. I think, I think the problem is that, in many ways, China has decided in the last few years to take a path that's rather different than what the business community expected when China joined the WTO in 2001. What we see is a real emphasis on industrial policies, and whereas every country might have one or two, in China it's seen that some of the most important sectors are now the focus of industrial policies. China came out with a plan called Made in China 2025 that identifies 10 industry sectors that are really cutting edge sectors for uh, competitive future economies. And there are very powerful industrial policies in place in each of these sectors where China intends to help their own industries and their own companies become global leaders. If you take semiconductors, for example, China has budgeted $150, $160 billion to support their own semiconductor industry. And so companies doing business in China are concerned that they may not get the benefits of that and they'll be facing competitors who are really uh, getting a lot of uh, special benefits from the government. And also industries in other parts of the world are concerned about the effect that Chinese exports might have if they come from highly subsidized and supported industries.